Please welcome Founder and Chief Executive Officer of Rivian, RJ Scringe. Wow. <laughs> I'm so excited to have all of you here. Um, you know, this is a moment that's been building for so long for us and to have so many friends, family support, friends, family supporters that are here, it's like moving. I can feel it in my soul right now. So, so thank you guys. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot to talk about today. You know, I started Rivian and really at the core of it, every decision we make, the products, the strategy, what we're building, how we go about building our business, the way we structure our teams, the, the, the way we think about our culture, has been built around this idea of keeping the world adventurous forever. And so much of that ties into this world of forever, or into this word of forever. And forever is, a, is an intimidating word. It's a word that means so many things, it's hard to even capture what that represents. And when we look at that word, when we think about what we're building, what we're creating, it extends beyond us. It extends beyond what we're doing today, what we're doing this month. And we often say we're building a world thinking about our kids, kids, kids. And it's our kids, 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 that mindset that informs how we make product decisions and it informs, really importantly, how we make the products what they are. So today, um, you know, we think about that and we look at what we're going to be, look, uh, we're going to be showing you just recognize the thoughtfulness that thousands and thousands of decisions have gone into those products. And to start that, we developed our R1 product line really as our handshake with the world. These are products that redefined what a truck was, what an SUV was, and enabled a level of performance, capability, everyday usability that really never before been seen. And that was built on this deep desire this really deep desire to make products that not only enabled the types of ventures we want to take photographs of, the kinds of things we want to remember 20 years from now, 100 years from now, but also inspire those things, inspire you to say yes to things that scare you, to explore, to do new things. And that desire to explore feeds into all the things that we drive as a business. And hopefully you see that in our future products and what's to come. Now, beyond just the desire to explore, we also need to make sure that these products are safe. And a huge part of what we're building has been built around safety. In the R1 products, every decision that had to do with structure or the way the vehicle was packaged was laddering into the, the goal of making these not only a safe vehicle, but the safest truck and the safest SUV in the world. So the R1T and the R1S achieved that. Top safety pick plus, the highest safety rating on the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, five-star standard, and they're incredible. Now, linked to all this is a technology platform we created. We built software, we built electronics, we designed entirely in-house a network architecture that allows our vehicles to get better and better over time. And I see a lot of our owners out here, and I know one of the things that's most followed is what's the next set of features to drop? And we get to make improvements to the software, we get to make, add new features, I get tons of feedback. You know, my dad will send me, whether he likes it or not, uh, sometimes very strongly worded. <laughs> but uh, we love the feedback. We love the opportunity to be really integral and connected to our community as we're making all these decisions. You know, we think about our community, we think about our owners. It's such a powerful part of what we're building. When I started, you know, I can remember back, it was, uh, we had all these things we'd wrote, we thought about what, what do we want to become as a company? And one of the things that inspired us so deeply was to say, can we create something that inspires people, that inspires us to behave differently, inspires us to show up as our best self? And that was embodied in this goal of creating a, a movement or a community of users, a community of customers that just loved the product 
and had an orientation and optimism around the future that was so core to who we are. And there's so many ways to look at this. There's so many stories. I get lots of emails I love, I love sharing with the team. Emails from customers are doing really amazing things. So here's one that just embodies it beautifully. This is Milo. Imagine you're driving down the highway. You see a semi-truck in a ditch. <laughs> and you not only think to yourself, I'm going to pull over and see if they're all right, I'm going to try to pull them out of the ditch. <laughs> and so much in this embodies Rivian. It's, it's that orientation to help, but it's also the fact that the vehicle can pull a semi out of a ditch. <laughs> uh, And so I, 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 I used to get asked the question, can, can, a, can a Rivian vehicle tow? And I'd always jokingly say, can tow a house across the street? Just how far do you want to tow it? But um, you, you know, beyond the products and beyond what we're creating in the technology and the software and propulsion and towing capability, uh, is really the other element of, of how our brand manifests, which is our spaces. And we're sitting in one today. This is normally a movie theater. It doesn't look like one right now, but normally there'd be seats right here. Um, and this is an example of the types of spaces we want to create as a company. Spaces that are active elements of the community, pull people in, drive discussion, uh, enable the, the types of dialogue around what's coming in terms of electrification, what we have to drive in terms of change. Um, and this is one of many spaces. We're building more of these, and we have them across the US. And each one of these is special. Each one has some unique link to the community that it's in. And um, you know, these, are, these are a chance for us to physically manifest our brand in, in a very unique way. But beyond the, the spaces like this, we also have a whole network of service infrastructure we've created. And when we think about service, you know, your mind immediately goes to the idea of going to a physical service location. But actually, more than half of our service is done with our mobile service fleet. So we have over 500 mobile service trucks, our R1T, and mobile service vans uh, that actually show up at your house, show up at your work, and we can fix your vehicle there. But in addition to that, for things that we can't fix in your driveway or fix in a parking lot at your office, we do have a physical service infrastructure. We have 54 service locations today. These are rapidly ramping up. Uh, and, and these are beautiful spaces, enthusiastic team members, and we've just started doing test drives out of these to get more people exposure, not just to Rivian, but importantly to electrification and what it feels like to drive an electric vehicle, something that really completely changes the way you think about the way a car operates. So we wouldn't be talking about electric vehicles in this massive transition where we have to move one and a half billion vehicles in our global fleet over the next, hopefully, few years, maybe a couple of decades, to electric without thinking about charging infrastructure. And one of the elements of charging that I, um, we often don't fully appreciate is most of it happens at home. More than 90% of your charging is happening actually in your garage. Uh, but you do need to go point to point. You need to go from Washington, D.C. to New York, from San Francisco to L.A. Uh, or if you don't have a garage, you need a way to charge your vehicles. So we're also building a high-speed charging network. We call it a Rivian Adventure Network. Uh, it's rapidly being built out. Uh, within a few years, we'll have 600 of these charging locations. And it'll be an open network. So it'll be Rivian vehicles as well as non-Rivian vehicles. And beyond that, we, of course, integrate across the other third-party platforms. And importantly, in fact, this month, our vehicles will be able to access the Tesla supercharger network. <laughs> and, that's for, and that's for existing customers. But I think we're going to see a big shift in the mosaic of charging solutions. And the technology and the platform we developed with, with our Rivian Venture Network is really key for that. Now, powering that network and powering this transition to, to electrification, we, th we can think about the end vehicle, the use of that vehicle as driving this change, driving a downstream demand shift from, of course, you know, gasoline or diesel to electric. But we also need to create the upstream supply of renewable energy. And this is an area we've been really focused on. And we're committed to building out over 7 billion miles of renewable energy by 2030. And so those projects are already underway. And the downstream demand that all of our customers, all of our owners collectively represent, enable us to create this new upstream supply of renewable energy. So we're here to talk about what's next. 
We're here to talk about how all this brings us to our next set of products and, and really how we get a lot more people into our products, into our, into our brand. And how do we make Rivian more accessible to a lot more people? So with that, let me introduce you to R2. This is Jeff, our chief of design. Uh, and Jeff and the team have done just an incredible job of being the driving por force behind our products. Uh, we've been working together since well before the R1, so it is so amazing, Jeff, to see this and to you and the team, amazing work. Thank you. So it is so awesome to show this. Uh, I've been waiting for this for a while. And there's a lot to talk about here. The, the vehicle combines capability, performance, utility, storage, functionality in a way that we think just really fits right into a, a huge customer need and a huge need within the market. The vehicle size, uh, the, the vehicle capability really has been optimized around enabling, as I said, and inspiring all those adventures. And so we're gonna walk through the vehicle, but just starting here at the front, uh, in the front of the vehicle, we have a large front storage trunk. Uh, for those that are familiar with R1, of course, this should be uh, very relatable. But this is great for putting luggage, backpacks, your gear. Um, it's one of the most used storage areas of our R1 vehicle. We get to see the data on how all of our owners are using it. But it is just a, an awesome setup. And of course, this also serves to support a lot of the front safety in the vehicle in terms of the, the crash structure that you saw in those R1 videos. Now, if we go around the side of the vehicle, uh, it's, it's hard to see without sitting in it, but so much effort has gone into making sure the packaging, not just in the front row, but also in the second row, creates this really airy, really comfortable, really spacious experience. Something that um, really is world class. There's nothing quite like it in this size of vehicle where you get in and you feel so comfortable and it feels so inviting. Uh, and we're gonna take a look at the interior in a second. But first, just walk around the back. We did a lot of work to create something that builds a really open air experience. And you just saw, or maybe you saw, these quarter windows pop out. And what that does is we leverage the negative pressure off the back of the vehicle uh, to pull natural air through. And it creates this beautiful open air feeling experience. And then the rear glass, which you just saw drop, also opens. And now the rear glass opening, it, it literally feels like an open air experience. But this gives you an ability to put. <laughs> this, this, you can put surfboards, you can put longer gear. Uh, and as you just saw, the second row seats fold flat, but also the first row seats fold flat. And the first row seats folding flat. That gives you, when, you know, if you're driving the vehicle, you can put long things in very easily. 
But if you're not driving the vehicle, let's say you're camping or staying right in the vehicle, it creates this awesome in-vehicle camping experience with an inflatable mattress. Um, so walking around here to the side, you're, you're thinking to yourself, well, what's, how does the vehicle size? You're probably looking at me, I'm about six foot one, trying to figure out how does this compare to an R1? Well, we'll, we'll tell you, it's about 400 millimeters shorter than an R1S. And uh, in addition to being shorter, it's quite a bit uh, or shorter in wheelbase, it's also lower in height. Uh, and it makes it, it fits into any garage, it fits into tight spaces, really maneuverable. But to look at it in a driving environment is really helpful. So we'll show you it here next to an R1S. It looks awesome. It looks really <laughs> like, you know, just you know, two family members out for a stroll. <laughs> I love that. Um, so let's take a look at the inside. And there's, uh, when we think about the design of an inside of in interior of the vehicle, uh, a lot of that ties to just what's in the, um, what's in the materials, what's in the packaging, what does it make you feel? What's that environment feel like? And so we spent a lot of time working through those materials and the overall packaging to create an experience that is as inviting as, as one could imagine. And we have a lot of feedback from R1. And one of the points of feedback was a desire for a glove box. And we, we had lots of reasons to not have one. But on, on, on R2, we over-delivered, and we put two glove boxes in. The other thing, I mean, there's lots to see here, but the, one of the things that's so, so exciting is the way we've looked at the controls. And we have these really nice, large wheels and the uh, scroll wheels and the steering wheel. There's dynamic haptic, haptic feedback. So it allows us to adjust what it's feeling like when you're scrolling, and it's, it's magical. It takes our existing scroll wheel and really up-levels it to a degree that's hard to fully appreciate unless you're sitting in the car. Now, jumping back out, uh, a lot of work went into the doors, moved the speaker out of the door, gives us space for a large water bottle here, and of course, it wouldn't be a Rivian if we have a flashlight in the door. So. Really love that, super handy. Um, so now, how, how does this set up in terms of how it functions? And we built an entirely new platform to underpin this vehicle. Uh, a lot of work went into driving manufacturing cost efficiency. And it's built around a, a 4695 cell. So 40, it's a cylindrical cell, 46 millimeters in diameter, 95 millimeters tall. It's a much larger cell than the 21 millimeter diameter uh, cell that we have in in R1 today, and that cell's integrated into a highly structural battery pack. So the battery pack in the floor actually makes up a big part of the vehicle structure. The top of the battery pack is actually the floor of the vehicle. So a lot of these innovations that we're driving into how we build the vehicle are you know, core to us making sure the price point can be really affordable. We'll get to that later. Um, but at the, from a drivetrain point of view, oh, we have a single motor, rear wheel driver variant, we have a dual motor, one motor in the front, one motor in the back, all-wheel drive variant. And then we have a tri-motor, two motors in the back, one in the front. And in the highest performance variants of the vehicle, zero to 16, well under three seconds. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's very quick. Um, and then all those motor combinations uh, can achieve over 300 miles in range. So, so much, so much of what a Rivian is, is, is capturing the dynamics of the vehicle. And we, we needed to make sure that all the decisions we made in the aggregate, the suspension, the drivetrain, the battery positioning, the packaging of the vehicle, delivered something that drove like nothing else. Something that was exciting on-road, something that was incredibly capable off-road, but had the everyday refinement and usability uh, to work if you're parking it in San Francisco or driving it in New York. And so that focus on dynamics is so embedded in, in our culture as an organization uh, and embedded, of course, into our products. Now, we talked about the vertically integrated electronics we built that enable this amazing software platform that we've seen in R1. We take that even further in R2. Uh, we talked about how the packaging and the design of the, the structure 
allows us to achieve really amazing, uh, you know, amazing manufacturability. But we've all also focused a lot on sensors and the compute in our vehicle. And this has 11 cameras, five radars, you know, four radars in the corner, one long range radar in the front, which we couple with our new much higher compute platform, which will label this to, enable this to have a very high level of self-driving. And for us, that represents being able to get on the highway, take your hands off the wheel, eyes off the road, and, and truly operate it where you get your time back. And that's, um, I, 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 our, to our self-driving team, we're, we're really excited about what this vehicle represents uh, for us. Now, um, I do want to talk just a bit about how we position, you know, laid out the manufacturing system here. And I talked before about battery pack, but every single decision in a vehicle, and I say this a lot, you, you look at a vehicle in the aggregate like this, and it, it looks like oh, maybe there was a few thousand decisions. There's millions of decisions that have to be made across thousands of engineers, and those thousands of engineers making those collectively millions of decisions we're incredibly focused on ensuring every one of those is not only optimizing for, for what the ownership experience will be, but optimizing our ability to make this very affordable and very accessible. And so the R2 starting price will be $45,000. And you can reserve one starting today. Yes. I love that. I'm so excited about this vehicle. Uh, I'm so excited about what it represents for us as a company in terms of achieving scale, what it represents for us in terms of our collective learning being embodied into one vehicle as the, you know, the follow product to what we did with our flagship product with R1. But it's important to note, R2 represents not just a vehicle, but it also represents a platform. And that platform, as I said, the performance, the capabilities, but also the flexibility from a manufacturing point of view is really important for us. And I'm really, really excited to talk about R2's sibling, which we call R3. So you didn't expect that one more thing here. <laughs> so R3 is, we're so excited about what this sort of delivers beyond what we see in R2. It's, it takes the package of R2 and the platform, it shrinks it, it puts it into our take on what is a crossover. Um, and it's a vehicle that's almost hard to define what it is, but it so beautifully captures our brand, it captures what we represent as a company. Uh, it's dynamically incredible. The shorter wheelbase, the tighter dimensions, uh, really enable it to be something that's you know, maneuverable and drivable. But as tidy as it is on dimensions on the outside, we've put so much effort into making sure that the inside feels big. And uh, much like we saw on, on R2, uh, there's a lot of work that went into everything that you see in the rear of the vehicle, the, the occupant areas in the front of the vehicle. But this is all enabled by the platform. And it's about five inches shorter, 135 millimeters shorter than what you see in R2 in terms of wheelbase, but leveraging all that same content. So the single motor, the dual motor, and a tri-motor, the beautiful battery pack built around a, a larger format cell, our network architecture, uh, really excited about that. Oh, hello. Um, so up front, we have a front storage trunk, much like what we had in R2. And that storage area of the vehicle, uh, you can use to throw all your gear, your bags, and something like this, wonderful for, for that everyday 
urban usability, uh, adventure usability. But I want to spend some time in the back. And we spent so much time as a team thinking about working on how do we create a unique closure experience in the back. And what you just saw happen is the rear lift gate came up. Um, just like we saw in R2, the first and the second row seats fold flat. Uh, so it creates a, an opportunity for in-car camping or it creates an opportunity to carry your long gear. Uh, but when we close this, there's a second way to get to the back, which we call our flipper glass. And what I love about this is it makes it easy to get things in and out, but this actuation can actually go to multiple heights. So if you're carrying something that's longer, that could be a surfboard, it could be stuffed animals, it could be a trombone. Um, you can adjust the height here, and it's a, it's a user setting to make it really easy to carry those bigger objects or bigger things around. And you know, as I said, everything in, as we thought about this vehicle was around making a, a smaller car, car feel really big. Now, looking at the interior, a lot of what we saw on the, um, you know, on the R2 carries over here. So the use of materials, the way we think about the sustainability of those materials, how durable they are, uh, and, and really embodying that Rivian feel is, is driven into this. And I wish we could all sit in the car right now. But it, um, same thing we, we had with R2 with the control wheels and the steering wheel. Lots of flexibility in terms of storage. Two glove boxes. Um, <laughs> and of course, we still have a flashlight here. <laughs> now, we talked about platform flexibility. Hopefully you're seeing that here between R2 and R3. Uh, the ability for these, these two vehicles with really common family genes. You can feel their siblings. They look like the Rivians. They feel like the Rivians. Unfortunately, you can't all drive them to say they drive like the Rivians, but I can guarantee you they do. Um, but there's one more thing. <laughs> one more thing. And looking at our, our three, we wanted to take everything that's embodied and put it into an even higher performance package. And this is something we call R3X. I mean, I, this is just so cool. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is the vehicle, when we walk around in the studio, everybody sees it and they're like, oh, I want that so bad. Um, and I, I think you know, that happens for anybody that sees it. But this captures, as you can see, R3, but pulls a level of like, deep, deep performance capability into it. And there's lots of subtle differences. It's a wider wheel and tire, a little wider stance, more ground clearance, tri-motor setup. Um, and a focus on really taking the, the capabilities of, of what Rivian represents and, and really flexing that and really showing that. And, and a small car, small, smaller crossover, uh, delivering a level of on and off-road performance that, um, that will get us all very excited. Um, and what you can't see, and I want to show, is the interior on the vehicle is just beautifully laid out. Uh, we, we had a chance to really stretch ourselves. Uh, this is an interior combination we internally call rugged playful because it looks rugged and it looks playful. Uh, but the use of materials and the use of how we laid out those materials with cork and with interesting weaves and interesting ways to anodize metal, uh, it feels so uniquely Rivian, but also so unique to this vehicle and, and to the performance variant. Now, <clears throat> as we think about this portfolio of vehicles, 
R2, R3, R3X. Uh, I can see from the room, everyone is excited. We are, we are so excited. These, and, these, these represent our future. These represent what we've been building to, the, the brand that we established with the R1 products and, and positioning Rivian to take that further and make that more accessible to more people. And we've been working hard to find ways to pull the timing on these programs forward, to get them to as many people as possible as quickly as possible. And with that, I'm excited to, to, to say that we're gonna be pulling the timing in to allow R2 to start deliveries in the first half of 2026. And, and, we're, and we're able to do that, we're able to achieve that, that accelerated timing by leveraging our production capabilities in normal. Yeah. Using, using, using our Illinois site to launch R2 and get that into market as quickly as we can. Now, our Georgia site remains really important to us. It's core to the scaling across all these vehicles between R2, R3, R3X, and we're so appreciative of all the partnership we've had there. But being able to leverage the team, the skill, the passion we have in our Illinois facility to get that into the market, to get that to customers, some of those orders I heard over there, as quickly as possible, we are, we are just ecstatic about. Now hopefully you see, when we look at our products, when we look at R2, when we look at R3, when we look at R, at R3X, every decision, as I said, ties to making sure these vehicles enable and inspire the kinds of things we wanna take photographs of, the kinds of things we wanna remember 20 years from now, 30 years from now, and so we've also developed a set of accessories that sit on these products. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that, that link to making and building those memories. So we have a tent that's so beautifully integrated that goes onto the top of R2 or R3. Uh, we have bike racks that make the use of bikes really easy. We want all of our vehicles to be the easiest vehicle to go biking with. Um, and we have a really clever way to think about a kitchen and rear storage plugging into our storage ports in the back of the vehicle. But ultimately, we as a company, we as Rivian, we exist to not only help transition a world away from combustion fuels and into electrification, we exist to help generate amazing memories in the process of doing so. Thank you everyone so much for joining us today to hear about our future. We couldn't be more excited. <laughs>